Yes, there is a knife inside. I promise we'll get to it. But first, check out this company's presentation. A plain brown box. <laughs> There's no images of any kind, tactical or hunting imagery. There's no logos. There's no advertising. There's no special claims. There's no hype. It's a plain brown box. Kind of refreshing if you ask me. I love that. And to me, I think it sends to the world a message all its own. And that is, we don't need all that stuff. The knives will speak for themselves. And in this instance, this model of knife, I totally agree. I think it is one of the best semi-stainless steel, small, fixed blade knives I've seen to date. Welcome to the Net and Fancy review of my first ever Knives of Alaska. And this is the Elk Hunter Sure Grip model in their Trekker series, model 161FG. Q, Raider, Raiders of the Lost Ark, opening of the tomb sound. Now that's a good presentation too. Simple, to the point, functional, and I will say that pretty much defines the Elk Hunter by KOA, Knives of Alaska. Jumping right into philosophy of use, it is designed, as I think most of their knives, as a hunting blade, specifically a skinning blade for large game. Form follows function here. Having skinned my share of fair game growing up, I can tell you this knife would do quite well in that philosophy of use quite well. We got to jump into ergonomics right off in order to prove that point. One is the dub double finger choil right here, affording absolute control during what can be a very dangerous skinning process. My brother-in-law, by the way, just cut his finger severely skinning an antelope. Not sure what knife he was using. I'll probably find out. Find out. He's a very experienced hunter, by the way. He's been hunting his whole life. He goes every year. He's skinned hundreds of large game animals, and here he goes and almost slices his finger clean off. So when we talk about the hunting philosophy of use, the skinning philosophy of use, you better have some control over your blade when your hands are all slippery with blood and guts. I think KOA kind of knows this. Look how they put the knife together. Absolute control afforded in the Elk Hunter. Control here and absolute perfect jimping on the top. I'm so glad to see someone gets it. They get it. And you really cannot execute that jimping any better than Knives of Alaska has done on the top. And look, it's not just a short run. No thumb ramp. But in this philosophy of use, you don't need one. Uh, it's just... This whole knife just locks into your hand. You can come back and hold it conventionally or you can choke up right here, riding your thumb on that. Fabulous ergonomics, just perfect for the skinning philosophy of use. But I think this knife actually goes much further than that in POU. I think it's an all around outstanding woods and camp knife, albeit it's a little bit small. It's only a 3.25 inch cutting surface there. But in that POU, that's probably enough. Food preparation, maybe some light firewood preparation, I think it would be enough. Nice belly to that blade as well too for that skinning task, utility food preparation task. This is a user knife. I wouldn't say collectible. It is designed to be used. You can see from the handle material that's kind of where it's at. Um, I would also going to, I would also add perhaps a soldier blade POU to that. And as you guys know, watching the project, I really require blades that I that I will put into this category to be extremely lightweight. Four point four ounces. Four point four, very light. With the leather sheath, it's only six point eight ounces. Carry weight you will forget you have it on your person 
and you get fixed blade strength when you do that. I mean, we always hear some claims from certain folding knives about how strong they are. I've always said, if you want a fixed blade strength, get a fixed blade. That's all I'll say about philosophy of use. You can probably gather with my earlier ergonomic discussion that the feel is pretty much perfect for this knife. Not much to add to that. I'm talking balance as well. This is D2 Steel. Knives of Alaska. I think I could be wrong. They know a thing or two about what steel will serve their customers best. And by that, I mean you're skinning a big animal, let's say an elk. You want something that's going to edge retain as best you can. I think they pretty much got their formulation of D2 down. 59 to 61 Rockwell scale. And by the way, on this very elegant small drop point knife, it's flat ground. Thank you very much. And it's kind of stonewashed. Gray stonewashed, I guess, is what I call the finish on the elk hunter. It also comes in a, co a combo. It'll come with the elk hunter and then a very small caping knife that uh, KOA calls the bear hunter, I think. I'm sorry, the cub bear. This is my favorite, though. Just a, a simple one like that. Nice big flat for sharpening. And yes, I did sharpen this after doing some cutting on it. I wanted to see how hard that D2 was to sharpen it. I, I got to say, I was surprised it wasn't a problem at all with my Edge Pro Apex. You can see that's my relief edge on it. I backed it up just a little bit and this sucker is just insanely sharp. I don't have really anything. Yeah, I do. I've got a card from the ProTac Streamlight light. See how that goes. So this is card stock. Could go all night with that. Yeah. I think it's a good steel choice, and like I said at the outset, semi-stainless. We all know that about D2. It's not perfect. Blood is especially harsh on rust, or I should say, prone to rusting blades. It's a good hand. It's a good steel choice, and like I said, I think they've just kind of arrived at it after probably trying a bunch of other stuff, knowing what I know about KOA. Pinned hand, pinned handle, can't take it off. Uh, kind of a downside, I like to be able to service my blades. It might be a little bit lighter weight putting it together. And I love the polymer they've chosen. It's not a craton, I don't think. It has a little bit harder finish to it, which I like. Won't grab clothing as much. In the choke up position, you can see how it fits the human hand. Pretty awesome. If you hold it conventionally, you might run out a little bit of real estate. This does extend back. But it's not obnoxious to where it's banging into the pinky finger, and I'm not going to be hacking with this blade. That's not its calling. Nice rounded shoulders all the way around. It does lack a lanyard hole. I don't really see that to be a problem because it's a small knife. I don't put lanyards usually on my smaller blades. Full tang design, obviously. Really like the, sh the handle. Medium traction on the side, but with that jimping, locks in. Here's the sheath. Vegetable tanned leather. It's just really handsome. Very traditional. That's to be expected from a hunting knife company. I love the finish on it, how they did it. It's their emblem burnished into the leather rivet here. No drainage holes. And it still has all the disadvantages of leather. Made in the U.S., by the way. The whole kit and caboodle. Get it wet, stays wet. And actually, it's somewhat of a pouch sheath, which will loosen up on you. I recommend when you store... Your elk hunter, probably take it out of the sheath. That way this portion will stay somewhat stiffer. You could wet it, shrink it a little bit if you wanted to. What I really like, and I, I don't mind the sheath. It's traditional loop over belt carry stuff. What I wish for a soldier blade is something like this. I'm stealing this from a ZT0160. It doesn't really fit it, but you get, you'll get the idea from this. Look how cool that would be. Nothing fancy, you and your plastic sheets. You always love that. I do. I'm out in the snow and the rain, dudes. That's really the only disadvantage to the package of the sheath. I think most hunters that are buying, buying this blade, I don't know if they would dig this. To them, it just doesn't appeal to them. It's not, I don't know, a traditional thing. I'm really not going to spend any time on competitive offerings. I'm just going to make this a short video. But you can go into my fixed blade playlist here in the Net Fancy Project, and you'll find some there. 
I just have this one floating around from a recent review. Here's a Mora, very affordable bushcraft triflex. It's a carbon steel blade, Scandi grind. Super lightweight, super affordable, more than this. This one's going to run, I think, around 85 bucks. Worth every penny, by the way. The fit and finish on the Knives of Alaska Elk Hunter is superb. There are no flaws that I see. I could have lived with it out of box. Main reason, I'm talking the edge. The main reason I did it is I wanted a little more gradual relief edge. And I wanted it insanely sharp. I think this knife actually has, for me, two kinds of cool. Very capable in the philosophies of use that I talked about. Very capable. I think it'd be an insane defensive blade. Albeit, I like the reach of the larger fixed blades, but I know some of you guys like the small and very fast in hand blades. I mean, it locks in. Double finger, finger choil, huge jimping run on the top. Yeah, it can flex into that. I don't know if I even mentioned that. Calling is as a wilderness knife, though, and I think it excels at that. Highly recommended. Highly. Really, it sets a lot of standards for edge retention, quality, and no hype performance. That's a nothing fancy review. Go get one.